What's going on, everybody? Hope you are having a wonderful week so far. Uh, before we start the podcast, please hit subscribe. Please give us a review once it's done. Um, keeps the podcast going, and I thank you for that. So, uh, podcast time, and this week got the one and only Amy out. Amy has kind of gone from strength to strength from the pandemic and having early days or pre-pandemic, not really even DJing or, or just wanting to DJ to pandemic during the pandemic, learning how to DJ properly and growing her social media massively and coming out of the pandemic with a full-time career in music. It's been amazing um, to see the journey of, of how it's happened for her. Um, her record's doing extremely well on releasing. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just been amazing to see. So I've known Amy for a long time and and I love her to bits. And I just wanted to get her on the podcast and talk about the struggles and the pros and the cons and everything of what she's kind of been through in the last couple of years um, because she's been chucked in the deep end and, and I really respect what she's done and, and how she's dealt with it. So without further ado, Amy L. Amy L. Yes. What's cooking? How are you doing, Will? I'm good. How are you? You just got back from America. I'm good, yeah. A little bit tired. I think jet lag maybe has got me this time, but we'll see. We'll see tonight if I can sleep. When did you land? I got in, I'd say maybe six hours ago. I've actually no idea of the time. Of course you don't. I don't know. <laughs> Just went straight to bed, which I shouldn't have done. Oh, Last you went to I went bed? To I did. I didn't manage to sleep on the flight, you know, so I thought I needed a couple hours just to be able to function and do this podcast. <laughs> You're brave. Going straight to bed, straight after a flight. I know. I know. So I did it. So here we are. We're going to soldier through this. I'm going to soldier through. So I, I apologize to anybody listening if it's a bit boring. Um, Just ramble on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all good. How's things? You well? Good. Really good. Um, we're getting into the final shows of this year, which is crazy. But it's been a crazy year of shows, you know. Um, my first ever shows, my first ever tour, which is insane. Um, couldn't ask for more. Being a whirlwind, to be honest. It's mental. I want to talk to you about... This is pretty much what I want to talk to you about. Let's get um, into it. Is you... I've known you... How long have I... I've known you for quite a while now, I think. Yeah, you know me from like the start, really. I, I knew you before you were a DJ. Yeah, I was I was a singer, wasn't I? You were DJ shit tunes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, don't put it on this podcast. <laughs> Everyone's going to know. We've got That's to bring, all we'll say with that one. We've got to bring that story in, the, in, in here to. at some point. Anyway, um, cut long story short. Um, yeah, I met you. Well, I didn't meet you. I would, We started talking before you were a DJ. Um and you were just writing songs and you were singing. Yeah, I mean, I studied music in Liverpool. I've always been singing, playing guitar, piano, all that stuff, um, songwriting. And then in my final year of uni, I just got into more, well, I got into producing, got into more electronic music. Mm. And then I was like, how am I gonna perform this live? And I was looking into the Ableton Push 2 and stuff mm. like that. And then I thought, I'll just, I'll do this DJ thing. I didn't know any DJs, which is crazy as well. And I just bought a pair of decks and then, hey, here we are. Well, I think like you make it sound a lot simpler than what it actually is because yeah. realistically, like <clears throat> when, what, when did you, when did you finish uni? What year did you finish uni? Oh God, I really should know this. I want to say like three, four years ago. Okay. And then when was the like idea of, I want to become a DJ or I want to try this out. It was in my final year of uni. Yeah. I mean, I do make it sound easy because I've been doing music a long time. It wasn't like yeah. I just bought a pair of decks and then I had one like these crazy shows one summer. I mean, it was pretty crazy. We can get into that. Yeah. Um, but I decided that I wanted to. I've always loved electronic music. And yeah. throughout uni, I, I was producing and I was doing more commercial mm. um, electronic music. And then, yeah, in my final year, I was just like, I'm going to learn this DJ thing. I'm going to go and go to events and and learn the world. And mm. even for my releases, I, as you can hear, there's been this progression. And I mean, you know, as well, yeah, yeah. just learning all of it, which has been pretty special. Um, 
so yeah, I just took the plunge and I did it. And I think like from, and then COVID happened. And mm. for a lot of artists, COVID was like, fuck, what do we do? Like shit's gonna, shit's hit the fan. And, but you weren't performing as a DJ before COVID, right? No, I mean, COVID happened as I finished uni. So whatever okay. year COVID was. 2020. Oh my God. Right. Okay. So there you go. It's I, only like two years ago. <laughs> like it was 10 years ago. Who knows? Jet lag has got me. I don't have concept of time. Let's um, not be blaming jet lag for that. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Okay. I shan't. Um, but no, I just kind of locked myself away. I mm. went back home to Scotland and I was able, and I was lucky enough to just write a shit ton of tunes, basically. Yeah. had a little bar job and I was still singing with guitar and bars. Mm. Um, then I managed to pick up some little DJ shows. This was just like just before lockdown. So I was doing the little DJ bar gigs, um, writing music, and then COVID happened. And I was able just to write tunes. I was on furlough, which was insane as well, Mm. because I could still do everything. Um, And then we came out of lockdown. I mean, throughout lockdown, it was... Let's let's talk about throughout lockdown. Yeah. Because like, this is what I want to get into. And it's like, there's been multiple artists that really kind of took lockdown, looked at lockdown as like a challenge and how to better their career for coming out of lockdown. And there was multiple artists that didn't have a fucking clue what to do during lockdown. And there was multiple artists that just stopped. And Mm -hmm. out of those, the people that the new artists or the artists that were big that decided to kind of work hard and really knuckle down and try and do something new, like came out of lockdown all guns blazing. And there was a community of artists that before before lockdown kind of didn't really have a career, but because they did something, whether that's weekly live streams, uh, TikTok, videos like instagram videos on a regular basis like lots of things that people did and you were one of those came out of lockdown with a full-on full-blown career to the point where you're playing shows that like i remember your first show back and you'd like i've never played in a venue like ever like this like and i'm going in like almost headlining like it was crazy yeah it was being like fabric and mm. Liverpool these just yeah massive shows which was daunting as well and that's right. another story to get into how yeah. just going into these big kind of shows and what that does but but I want to go uh, back to how how did that start like what what was it in your head at the beginning where you're like okay let's just try this and then something worked like how did it all work because I haven't spoke to you about that I mean I think it was like I started up my Instagram profile um and obviously with djs being so busy in the clubs they posted them djing Mm. and it was easy for content um i mean people were still releasing Mm. but for me i was like how can i still have an instagram or an artist profile and not be doing shows Mm. um and as you said i think most djs were scared because the only thing that you can do really is take videos of yourself djing and that's like that's also another (laughs) skill or it's daunting to do that but i yeah i just did loads of streams on twitch i the main thing really was I think I was probably one of the first DJs to to do the DJing reels. And now it's yeah. so massive. It seems crazy that I say this, but like, I remember like just taking videos of me DJing. Um, I was doing a lot more of the hot cue kind of stuff, mm-hmm. the more, um, I guess, James hype kind of stuff, which I'm not, I've, I've gone away from. But um, I remember someone else then doing that and it being weird because I was like, oh no, they're doing it as well. You know, it was weird because... Yeah. Well, it's like the first, but from that, it just kind of popped off on Reels and then TikTok. I just took the plunge, did TikTok as well. And then I think like people really resonated with the fact that it was all really personal. I remember mm. doing streams and I would get the family involved. I would get mum on the shots and everything. It was just really friendly and just nothing sort of big headed about it. Mm. And I think that's what people sort of loved. And I learned through lockdown i did dj tutorials i did stuff like that so i think that's kind of what 
got everyone involved and mm. it was at the start of my career and I think people like to follow a journey as well so people enjoyed seeing that and then even after lockdown you know there's those people are still with me and mm. they remember the, the first streams so I did one stream I remember for my single animal kingdom and I needed to create this really cool backdrop because I was like and I, I need something cool and I remember just being so busy in lockdown literally would just work all the time mm. And mum was so cute. Like she went into the garden and like she was like working on the hedge. And I woke up at God knows what time because I'd be up late, you know, with lockdown, there was no concept of time. Yeah. I would just like go to bed at 4 a.m. and wake up at whatever time. Um, and she went into the garden and cut like loads of um, hedge and leaves and stuff. And so she was like, I've created this backdrop. So we, <laughs> we just made this awesome backdrop. And then, yeah, it was just fun. It was it was a good time. Yeah, it, and that's what it kind of felt like when I watched you kind of d grow throughout lockdown and saw your socials grow and saw everything kind of like come to fruition. And it was like, it was really interesting to see because you, <clears throat> I, it was such a different thing to what I'm used to seeing in the industry. And I think everyone, like not just, not to just you, but to some other part artists that kind of grew this huge following on mm -hmm. social media before before there were even clubs if you know what i mean and and some didn't carry on and some and some did and like yourself it's, it's carried on and it's huge and you've got like party boy 69 like that that dude created a huge thing stella bossy same thing like where where social media almost came first which I think the purists would kind of struggle to kind of comprehend that, but I actually find it really interesting that it gives anyone the space to, if they're willing to be creative and work hard at it. Cause the social media thing is not easy. I remember you being here in, in the studio and you like, fuck, I've got posts. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And there's, there's stresses to that. Like I think we all have, but also especially i don't know tell me if if i'm right or wrong but like when you're at your level of social media as well and the pressure that you have to keep going on with that does that does that bother you i mean yes i yes and no because i think social media is such a special thing that we can connect yeah. to everyone in the world and i think we sometimes underestimate the the power it has and the message that it has to be able to for one thing i love to show other females um mm. that you could do this and even male anyone you know people that are starting to dj like if they can see me doing it from nowhere in lockdown yeah um, and my tutorials as well just saying like right I'm going to do a stream and say like my, how I bought my decks and, you know, I went from Serato to record box and why I did that and yeah. what I've learned from it. Um, but when I got into shows and stuff to be, and when lockdown stopped, it was harder because life happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have everyone saying like, you got a post, you got a post and it's not always easy. It's not always mm. authentic. And there was a point where I wasn't enjoying it. And I was like, why am I doing this? Because one thing is when you get numbers, when a real or when a TikTok pops off, then you're like, yes, this is so good. Like the numbers mm. are shooting up, but you forget yourself and you forget your message and i think i then looked at okay these tracks are maybe the more commercial tracks and they're popping off and i could have went one way whereas i was like okay i'm losing like my love for this sort of more cooler more melodic sort of music and yeah i just needed to take a break it's from raining. that and as while we're writing I, I find it really hard to be able to to do it and have a clear head to write or to do shows and stuff like that so it's hard and I think you need to be aware and I still need to be aware of that just to like sometimes take a step back and people will still be there um if you can't post every day do you know what I mean and like so what if they're not I think that's the thing is like for me is the more um, I think definitely lockdown for me kind of made that fully aware for me where like sometimes something's gonna do well sometimes something's not yeah, and, and you don't know what's going to pop off as well. So there's no point. In, yeah. And like you think you do, and then the algorithm changes, and you're like, oh fuck it, that yeah. that video would have done amazing like a day ago, and today it's doing absolutely terrible. And mm. you know what? It, it's only 
it's only on the internet really and it's it's a it's a weird game because it's like we have this whole life that's revolved around social media now like it's a beautiful thing there's some beautiful things to social media and i i like social media maybe mm. not tiktok and maybe i should like tiktok but i just haven't got into it but still like it's a beautiful thing what's happened in the world i was i, I was getting my beard trimmed earlier and i was talking to, to my barber about it and it's like we we've we learn so much from it as well. And there's also so many negatives from it. But I think like it's whatever you decide to take out of it is is kind of up to you. Yeah, exactly. I think my main thing is just to like be authentic on it. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, like don't like with TikTok, you can follow trends, but you can do it in a way. I mean, I don't I don't really follow trends. I just try and do I find like a niche and I think yeah. right now it's like all the hand reels that I'm doing and people looking at what I'm doing and that's really working and I enjoy doing that. So mm. yeah, just doing that. And if you're not enjoying it, like think how can I enjoy this? What do I like about mm. taking a video um, rather than, I mean, TikTok started off being very trends and it wasn't cool but i think it's it's getting cool i mean it's the biggest platform now isn't it so Huge, yeah and i think the thing with tiktok is that you can be the whole point of tiktok is to get you get famous very quickly on it or you you become viral very quickly on it and it's like one video pops off and you're game over did you find it was the same for you where it was like one video and just started just went off and then it was like game on I mean, TikTok, I'm not as big um, as Instagram. I. T what do you mean by that question? So, you... so like from friends that have done been successful on TikTok, because you're you're still you still do well on TikTok compared to yeah. most DJs. Right. Like, was there a point for, for friends that have done really well on TikTok? They found one day they posted a video they woke up and the next day it was like blown the fuck up and they're like i, I don't know what i've done but i'm just going to do more of that and then it just carries on and it snowballs have, did you have a moment like that De i mean definitely um when i was you know when i first started off doing the videos and i remember just like refreshing my tiktok or my my instagram was the biggest one really and i remember just refreshing that and it'd be like plus a thousand plus a thousand yeah. like i'd be on four thousand followers and it'd be 10k it was yeah. just like insane but then that's that spiral effect of like i need to do more like i need to do more and it's mm -hmm. like you're looking at the followers whereas i think what's really important is like to not underestimate the followers that you have yeah. and I mean, that's the whole thing about saying, like, looking at the numbers and thinking you need to be more and just my whole thing of being authentic and not worrying. Um, mm. But it is crazy how you can just go from, you know, 10 views because TikTok is hard if you, if you, you know, yeah. you can get 10 views or you can get 10K. Yeah. And then it does, it is a spiral effect. If you get 10K, it just keeps going and then mm. comments come in and then it's it's a whirlwind from there so yeah it's really interesting I, I can't remember what i listened to but it was like when when it was it was talking about followers and 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 how artists look or people look at followers and like in comparison to like <clears throat> if you look at followers as like a venue size right like if you have a thousand followers that's a thousand people in a venue right and mm -hmm. You put a thousand people in a venue, there's a lot of fucking people, right? And then you get into the tens of thousands of followers. It's still 10,000 people. Of course, there's going to be bots and there's going to be fake things on there. But let's just just forget about them. And you have 10,000 authentic followers. Like, that's a lot of people if you put them all in one place. And then you get into the hundreds of thousands and you're like, you're like dealing with stadiums. And then, I know, right? Like, if you had all the TikTok followers, you'd be like, right, I'm going to put a stadium tour. Exactly. Next week. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's still, like, I don't know about you, but, like, I have goals with followers in my head. I don't actually write them down now because it's pointless. And I've worked mm -hmm. out that it's pointless. But especially at the beginning of my career, I had, like, these goals. And I was like, I need to get to this. I need to get to this. I need to get this. And it never made me feel any better 
about myself. Like it was just a point where it was like, oh, it's just another number. Do you do you get that, or do you are you like this goal is a great? Do you even set goals? Do you even worry about I, that? I I don't anymore. I I used to. Yeah. Um, I think my goal now is like the thing is with Instagram and TikTok because we can you know pop off and get so many followers especially well i on both platforms Mm. i think it's the people that like say all the followers on tiktok wanted to buy a ticket like it would be amazing but not all of them do because it's just so easy to hit follow and it's you know there's a bots as you said or Mm. xyz i think it's about the people that really want to be on the journey the people that are commenting the people that want to sign up to your fan mail yeah. and that's what you need to hold on to so mm-hmm. like i was trying to when i hit like 10k or something i wanted to keep popping off and i forgot like well the 10k that i have like why are they here okay yeah. maybe they want like a dj lesson or maybe they want a fan mail mm-hmm. to check in and i think that's that's the main thing for me like taking a step back sometimes and yeah I have moments where I need to I say like okay I need to carry on you know posting to get more numbers but it's like keeping the numbers because when you stop posting people do drop off and you see that I think that's such a good thing because if people drop off they don't really like you in the first place Mm. they were just there because you know they just hit follow they don't really care you want the people that are there they're going to stay there they're going to buy a ticket Mm. but that's that's true fans isn't it um that's the thing and i think that's the conversion rate for me is like <clears throat> how to create true fans over social media numbers and yeah right. and it's like i'd rather five thousand true friends than fifty thousand followers 100 percent. or i'd 100%. rather i'd rather five f- f- like fans than fifty thousand followers because it does fuck all yeah, exactly. And I think that's the thing with like the following the trends and not mm. being authentic. If you're just doing something because it's going to get you followers and you're like, oh, I don't really like this because that's what happened to me. I started doing these early on reels with music that wasn't probably, I couldn't see it. I remember my mm. manager saying like, okay, look at these reels. Like, is this what you want to do? Yeah. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? Yeah. Like I was just getting a bunch of followers but then if I was to put out a release or if I was to then do a cool track, which in turn, because TikTok wasn't as cool back then, and yeah. still it's it's latching on to, you know, the, the DJs that are not maybe playing those commercial records. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was gaining the wrong following. So mm-hmm. I wanted them all to sort of drop off and me to sort of change direction. And, and I think that's the main thing. And I just, I think I've said be authentic about 7 million times. <laughs> we get the picture, Amy. Be authentic. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I, I also think there's an argument against that to a certain extent is that, yes, be authentic, but also it's like we're allowed to evolve. And I think yeah. like from me knowing you as a friend and as a DJ producer, it's like I know you love commercial pop Ryan I, I and you're good at that and you and you like commercial music mm-hmm. and I think like that's the being the evolution like the evolution of Amy L that I've seen and maybe other people don't necessarily see that but I've seen that as as where it's like okay I really like commercial music I really like good pop songs yeah. and, and I mean I say that I think I w- I'm I'm more meaning like tech house yeah um because commercial i love and i i still write it i want to write it later yeah. on in my career um i yeah I, I think it was more the the tech house way um what are you, what are you saying bad about tech house Amy? that's all i'll say that's all <laughs> oh this it is going this, this is going to be me. a great sound bite this is going to be the best tiktok <laughs> We're going to make this the best TikTok is Amy L. Exactly. Talk- Amy L. Everyone talk- follow me. All my followers. <laughs> Amy L. Talking shit on TikTok House. It's fine. We've spoke shit about Tech House a lot of times on, <laughs> on this podcast, don't worry. I actually love Tech House. I, I, I make Tech House a lot, but I just don't. I, it's, it, again, it's fashion, right? And it goes in and out and music follows fashion more so than I think fashion does to a certain extent you have hot minutes of somebody wearing baggy jeans you have a hot minute of someone playing tech house and everyone wants to do it because it's popular at the moment 
Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think it's, but again, it's about, as an artist, it's about finding what really you are and what really tastes your fancy. And that can change. But yeah, I think, exactly. And I think, sorry, just to stop you there. I, I think go. that's, I was like really freaking out when I was, you know, my, my first single, which like, I love because, well, I love and I hate, I, it's not me, but like, I put it out and I think I say this to a lot of people, like put out tunes because you, mm. you won't learn from them. Like, as totally. you know, with me, like I still write loads and loads of tunes. I'm still discovering where I want to go and it's mm. so, so much closer. But like, if you just sit and lock yourself in a studio and not put tunes out you don't I I feel like when you release a tune that's when you really discover if you like it because I remember like not wanting to show people my Spotify and Mm. not being proud of it which is actually a really not nice thing but um I've learned from them and I think that's a special thing as well so now I appreciate it and I I love the progression with it all I think that's really important because you're 100% right and I was I was talking to Ferry Corson about that this this morning, um, actually on the podcast and which is the podcast previously, but it's like once the music's I've said this, I'm like a broken record, I've said this a million times on here, but it's like once the music out, it's not yours, it's it's the it's the universe's, but you also still have an opinion on that record. And I've released so many records that I can't stand. And there's like the purists that like don't release it. Like, but at that time I loved it. And at that time I thought it was going to be a number one record. And at that time in my naive little brain, I thought it was going to be the biggest thing that the best thing since sliced bread, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And and it wasn't luckily, because if it was, I'd be fucked because I'd still have to play that. And I think that's the amazing thing. And it, I've seen it with you and it must be the thing that I'm kind of, really interested to to kind of get your feelings on it is how are you processing this whilst being so public because a lot of that time doesn't a lot of this doesn't happen when you're touring full-time a lot of this happens right at the beginning of your career and once you have like a big record pop off you then start touring and you've kind of already found a sound and then once you found the sound and you're willing to evolve then it's just about evolving your sound but now you're like you're let's be honest, a year and a half in from touring full time and still trying to work that out. It's mm-hmm. kind of it, really interesting, but I'm just like trying to, how, how does that, what? Um, does... I mean, it's definitely been, definitely been hard because I think being thrown into these big shows yeah. um, and supporting whoever, <laughs> yeah. um, I felt a certain sense to play some records because I knew, I mean, you, as a DJ, you need to play what's right in the space mm. as well. Um, but I found it really hard when people said like, where do you want to be? And yeah. I had that with agents mm. um, and it didn't always work out with agents um, because I couldn't, because I couldn't say where I wanted to be. But then again, like, I just know where, when I know it's going to be right. And there's no point in me like saying, okay, I want to be here because Mm. like, I know I can do it. I can write this music and yeah, I could go and smash one. If I picked like, I want to be next to this person and I need to write these sort of records to go there. Like that's so much easier said than done as well. Um, But I think I am just being true to myself and I know like I'm so close to it. Mm. And by playing, I mean, the one good thing is playing all these shows. Um, Mm. I, when I play a show, I kind of sit back and I evaluate what I've played and what moments I loved in that and, and why. And I have learned so much. And I think, yeah, there was a moment um, where I really just wanted to stop everything because I was like, Mm. I've, I've been thrown in the deep end. I'm playing these shows. I'm not enjoying it. Social media. I'm having to do this. I'm having to say where I need to be. And if I don't, then I'm going to get dropped and all this. And I think, God, just write the music that you want and it takes time and I and we've had chats about yeah this. yeah I was gonna say I remember the, the, the phone call when you landed in LA I, I hope you don't mind me saying I think it's important that people hear this it's like mm-hmm. I had a text from you saying I think I'm gonna take a break mm-hmm. and I was like fucking cooler now <laughs> but yeah. it's like 
I and this is the thing I cu- I couldn't imagine the pressure of what that is for you because it's like you come out of lockdown and and don't get me wrong like you're in a it, this is a great situation to have because it's a great learning but I want other people to learn from this yeah. and and I and I think like you have a great life or I have a great life but it's also and we're very fortunate of where we're at but I think it's also like how can you learn from this and how can other people learn from this and it's like from the outside everyone sees the Amy L on social media kind of doing her thing partying left right and set not partying but well partying for you um and uh, DJing playing shows all of your music does really well like your music does better than most big DJs out there on on so on streaming etc etc like from an outsider's point of view it's like oh she's killing Mm. but they don't see the like battles of like that of being a super young artist really like and i mean young not as in young person although you you're young we're all young in comparison to some of the old guys but like young in the industry where you haven't experienced so much of it and you're just getting thrown in the deep end thrown in the deep end you get given the biggest agents you get and everybody wants to take from you but it is also like when you don't know what to you're almost like you don't know what to give because you don't know yourself it's like finding it's like being in a relationship right it's like that that first honeymoon period is great and then after the honeymoon period you really work out what but the your partner is Mm -hmm. and and what you want in life and etc etc it's that kind of balance but how how have you dealt with that through the pressures and through going to to where you're at now because i I know there's been like a, a change Mm, I think I just, you know, what is it's when I did go to LA yeah. and I woke up and I was going to writing sessions and LA is a very lonely place when you first go as well. Um, and I just wasn't enjoying it. Mm. I had pressure saying where I wanted to be. I was going and writing sessions and freaking out about what I wanted to write because I write so many different styles and I was like oh my god I I need to know like I need to have the next seven records in place because you know everything needs to be moving so fast because I was playing the shows Mm. and yeah I woke up and I just I was hating it and I think I did take a step back a little bit I mean I was I'm probably isn't as you can't see on my socials because I did decide like I am just gonna go on but I decided like okay I need to now not do things for other people and I need to do it my way Mm. and like just be happy about the journey because I wasn't I wasn't happy with how slow things were going and I'd write like I spent all day in the studio writing loads of records um, as you know and it was really stressing me out going in sessions and sometimes coming away with like a commercial garage tune because I love going in the studio and just vibing with people. And yeah. I felt really pressured to go in and write a tune that was for Amy L. Mm. And I did LA, um, good tunes came from it. But when I came back to the UK, I just decided to really just get in the studio and really discover what I wanted to do without any pressures and kind of take a step back from the re- the releases um I'm still discovering it and as you said like I am a lot a lot closer but I think it was definitely hard but I don't know it was just a different way of of learning wasn't it I think it's a good thing obviously me doing the shows because I could I could learn at a faster rate from others totally. I think it was just the pressure of having the biggest agents and having no sleep sometimes and having to like have all the records ready and so much pressure for it to be fast and I know like things do need to be fast because when you have like momentum around you like if you lose that it's really hard but I just thought to myself like if I lose that I lose that like I've got that following once like I have the people that followed me from Twitch at the start like I need to be happy and I need to just do me and now I feel so much better honestly I feel so so much better for that so hey I learned a lot from my my trip in LA (laughs) (laughs) no I love that so much and it makes me so happy because it's I remember having so many conversations with you about how like about what Amy L is and Mm. like us going through like listening to so many records and just like 
I, th- I think the thing is, if you don't know, it's okay. And I think I felt so pressure because especially with agents and direction, like there was pressure on that and I didn't know. And I felt really bad for not knowing. And I thought, oh my God, do I just say this? And do I just play these shows? But if people don't follow you through their journey or don't believe in you, then that's okay. Mm. Because I think when I do know, and I know a lot more now, um, the people then that follow you or support you, it's going to go 10 million times better. Like if you enjoy what you're doing as well and you're not swept up in the moment, mm. it's good. And I, and I say, you know what you're doing in, in a light term. Cause I think we're always learning and we're always writing new stuff and developing. Um, but being okay to say like, okay, I don't know what I want to do and mm. I am going to take some time and, I'm not going to write this because I know it's going to pop off. I'm going to write this other record because it's me and yeah. it's different. And yeah, you know. No, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I think it's really important to kind of understand that is like not taking external pressures, whether that's just your management, whether that's your agents, whether that's your, your mum or whether it's your mate down the road, like, mm-hmm. I've I've worked with like <clears throat> during lockdown or coming out of lockdown I've worked with some pop people and well more pop dance and where they've like had a huge hit record like as their first record and then they're just chasing and chasing and chasing and it's like it's really sad to see because it it just takes all the fun out of it of what we started or why we started this Mm -hmm. and and i think when you start adding business people in agents managers press all of that it's like everyone else has a perception they all have a perception of what they want from you and rather than just allowing you to take the space and the time and go in you know what amy we'll be here when you need us like just do your thing we'll get you shows we're book you on these dates we'll get you remixes we'll make sure that all your records do well just be you mm-hmm. like and i and i wish that happened more because yes it's a business yes you have to make money but if you give an artist or a human being it doesn't necessarily have to be in music it's just in life like you get so much more from that person and you build a much better relationship and i think for me is like life is just about the relationships you make and how can you how can you have the best time with the best relationships and and if i like i i've gone through managers i've gone through agents i've been dropped by agents i've been i've fired managers i've not been dropped from managers yet give it time ryan if you're listening (laughs) um but like it took me years it took me years to kind of learn what i want and and i still i yes i know what i want to a certain extent i know what i want for today i might wake up tomorrow and change my mind completely and be like i'm gonna go open a bakery fuck it like it will exactly i'll be there in the queue (laughs) but i think that's the thing is like it's just being able to accept that you can do what you want and it doesn't matter people look people are going to be there people aren't going to hate you forever and if 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 your team around you don't support it then find a team that do support it Mm -hmm. i think so as well and i think because i was you know i had my i'm still with my manager but it was like learning how to deal with that Mm. and learning how to deal with agents and at the same time play these big shows and at the same time produce xyz records it was Mm. just like all so much and it was like okay what do we need your instagram to look like and stuff like that and i was just like i i just need to take a step back from all this yeah it's the best thing i I did i think just getting swept up in maybe numbers Mm. um so yeah we we learn from it sorry i had to take a drink then Um, sorry talking a lot no i'm here for it yeah i think that's (laughs) it's so important it's, it's so important. And have you enjoyed being in the studio since? Oh, 100%. 100%. Mm. I think, like, not having the pressure um, yeah. to do 
to do just writing records that I know will suit. Yeah. Um, I think there's something to say having direction, which is like, I think you need to pick a certain direction, which mm. we all do. Um, but like when I didn't know, like I thought that was really not okay. Um, and I needed to take that time to know because there was just no point in me following a certain direction. And I think it's harder to then stray away from that direction and yeah. do what you want to do. So I needed to just like stop that. Mm. Um, I mean, we have all this agent chat, but it's because I got dropped by the agent. Yeah. Um, that I was like, oh my God. But I actually felt like this is a godsend because, well, for one, you want you want people that support it, where the story and what you want to do. And I felt felt really bad because I was like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. Mm. Um, and it made me made me feel a lot stronger mm. and really motivated to like actually just learn that rather than like try and be full steam ahead for everything and everything's going really well you know yeah. i've got my next release on friday is it friday um, well yeah. technically when this podcast comes out it will be out okay well there you go so go um, listen to it is it still um, yeah. called the same record yeah it's tom, called tom tune tom tune why is it called tom tune you know Long that's lost always been the name and i thought it's a really personal tune <coughs> i can't name it anything different yeah. like it's not gonna be real and it's been saved as that for god knows how long and i was just like i'm just gonna call it this so is that our work a picture of tom it's not actually no i was like can't get you in tom <laughs> uh, no i love yeah, that just... i love the record so if you are listening go check it out because it's beautiful and melodic and piano vibed it's really nice Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love it. There's not a better feeling in the world when you're releasing a record and you're like, I love this record so much. Mm -hmm. No, and I, I haven't really felt that um, before. Mm. And I think that's now with writing music, I am really enjoying it and learning what I love mm. and what I play live. And yeah, I think just write stuff that you want to play and and learn from it and be okay to make mistakes and be okay to learn on the way of releasing too. Um, yeah. But be aware. Do you like release day? Do you like that feeling or not? Um, all of my releases and the sounds like big or whatnot but like all my releases have gone really well yeah. i haven't yet had a release where it's i mean I, I don't like to say fail because i don't think a record can fail if mm. you love a record then if it doesn't do well it doesn't do well but there obviously is pressure that all the other ones have done well so if something comes out and it doesn't do as well it doesn't make you feel good and that's the whole number thing and the mm. spotify playlists and it's you know it's a hard world for people um that release music because i know females are getting a lot of attraction on spotify which is a great thing but yeah. then at the same time like there are some really talented males that get overlooked and it's yeah. like that's another thing as well and it's i find that quite a I don't want to say a sad thing because I think it's such a good time now for female producers to get noticed. I just think like it's really hard for everyone when we release music. And if we don't get into an editorial playlist, then that's it. You know, then you get back to the studio and you have to make another tune. And it's like all this work that's gone into a record just for a Spotify number. Um, but if a record is good, then... <clears throat> yeah, the record's always... The, I find I find the record, especially in our industry, I don't know in the pop world, if I'm honest, like I'm very far removed from, from the Spotify numbers on that side of things. But like the good thing about our world is that if DJs are playing the record or if people are asking for the record in DJ sets or like talking about it online, like that for me, that's a success. Yeah. If people were DMing you about your record, if people are commenting on your pictures going, I love this record, like that's a success. 
I'd be wrong in saying if I looked at Spotify numbers mm-hmm. as in on certain releases. There's certain releases where I know that it's not going to do well on Spotify. Like I 100% know if I'm going to do a remix. Then it's, it's not as good because you can have a record that has so many streams, but no DJs play it. Mm-hmm. And it's in a playlist that is just getting Massive. overlooked. Yeah. People are, yeah. it's just getting streamed. Yeah. Whereas you want people that like one, the DJs love the record. So they're playing it mm-hmm. and you're um, building that community and that um, relationship and um, all of that stuff. Yeah. And then you have your fans. And if you have the fan mails and people that want to listen to it, that's another thing. So Spotify mm. is kind of bad because there's some people with these massive numbers, but then when they go and play a show, they'll have one person in the audience. And I think that's more with maybe a commercial, well, I don't know no, as I much. I think it's with everything. Like, I think it's with yeah. everything. I think the correlation between selling tickets and streaming and radio none of them correlate none of them work together now and it's really it's a really interesting part of the industry because it's like oh this record's done five million streams and yet i still can't get booked in in a certain market like you're and you as so for anybody listening that it doesn't have spotify or doesn't release music on spotify we get like a quite a detailed background on the back end of Spotify that tells you exactly where the records are popping off. And like, I know that I won't get booked in half of those countries Mm -hmm. because like I've got, let's say 10,000 people listening to a record at this moment in time in whatever city in the world. But I guarantee that I can go show that to a promoter and the promoter would be like, well, you've never sold a ticket here in your life, so why would we book you? And yeah. It's it's a it's a really weird, really weird situation that everyone's in. I don't I don't know if it's good or bad. I don't know. I, I think just like especially for DJs, like write the the records that you want to play especially at the start of a Mm. career because if i was to go and write a commercial tune and never play it out live but get all the streams then you're in this weird world of people love that tune but you're not really going to play it or you do play it and you're in that commercial space and you can't go back and then you as you said you have that pressure to carry on and write the big tunes whereas Mm. now i'm in such a special place where i'm writing the music that i want to um dj i am yet to go into the more top lining space and i'm like excited for that but i know right now i am focusing on the more underground records and i want to have that sort of journey and people to be excited for those more like okay commercial i say in a light sense but more um vocal records maybe or that kind of world um but i think with streaming just write the stuff that you love rather than going for the numbers yeah. but it really i mean that's a really hard conversation as well because you could then release the music and nothing happens of it but if djs love it and they play it you build that relationship and i think that's really special and that's the best thing because djs having support from other djs is what you want especially from the start and that's why social media is great as well because you can all connect you know yeah you can slide into dms left right and center is that how yeah. we met i think so I think you're listening to the DMs, Will. You're like, oh my God, your TikTok's so amazing. No, you didn't even have TikTok then. Joking. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Who? And then you, in fact, you're the reason you put me on to, was it Layla? The singer? Yeah. I definitely got, I don't think it was Layla, but there was was definitely a singer I I put you in touch with. I can't even remember her name. But like, like. But I made Found My Love with her. Yeah. And because I remember wanting to do vocals as well. And I think mm. at the start, and I say this to people starting off, like I wasn't afraid to slide into people's DMs and yeah. say, like, do you want a vocalist mm-hmm. um, or do you want to collab? And I think like as well, even as my socials have grown and people slide into my DMs, like I always want to reply to people because like I know that feeling of when a bigger person mm. or whatnot comes back and says, like, let's try something. Yeah. It doesn't matter about numbers. Like, People have talent and that will pop off when it does or people will notice when it does. And I think don't be afraid if someone's bigger than you. And if they don't reply, don't feel no. like downhearted or you're not good enough. Just like try again, try someone else, like just keep going. Yeah, I think it's so important. Like it happened to me when I was kind of doing 
a more I wouldn't class myself as a techno artist, but like the more transition to techno, I would DM like I I love Dents and Pika. They're like my favorite artists from day one, really. And like I was like, oh, I really want to be on the label. Like I should DM them. And I just DM'd them and like, he was like, mate, I love your music. Like, let's do an EP. And I didn't ever expect them to ever have listened to of my music in the past or play my music. And mm -hmm. it was the same with Adam Bayer. Like I wanted to be on drum code. Didn't even, they, they, he would never put my records on drum code. My music isn't drum code. And then he DM'd me and was like, do you want to remix your mind? And I'm like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck's going on? But like, mm -hmm. I think it's, as artists and i you can tell me if you're if you feel the same or if you've been through this but it's like you look at everybody else as like on a pedestal because it's like oh i really w would love to like be as successful as them or even if you're more successful than them in whatever success is but like you love their music so much and the music talks to you so much that you're like i could never be associated with them because they're so good Mm -hmm. and then all the time all the time i feel like that it's wild right i think that's imposter syndrome as well and that's like even playing shows you know mm -hmm. and i think i was always good at that from the start of like messaging people but like i think now i learn that everyone is learning from others and like mm -hmm. you can have the biggest acts that then message you back and they love your stuff um and just like it doesn't matter where you're at like yeah if you're talented and if you love what you do and you write good music or you're just friendly, like mm. it gets you places. Um, and connecting with people is the strongest thing in this music world. Like how small this industry is just like, mm. be nice and don't be afraid to, to reach out because things come from it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Mm. Um, what have you got on for the rest of the year? we this is, this podcast is going out in October. So okay. this is like mid October it goes out. Just a heads oh, up. I have got Paris shows next with Hot Sense Eighty Two, Sick. and then I go to Slovenia with um, Yours from. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> never say the name. I even I even said that to myself. Like say the name right. <laughs> God. No, but I love this. <laughs> I love this. Like Yours, he's such a lovely guy. And his music. I know I played so, with him before as well. His like, music's honestly. so good. Um, I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited for those shows. And then, oh, I've got I've got more, and I, I can't even remember yeah. to be honest. Like, I, it's I'm actually like happy that it's all slowing down though, because now I can kind of take a step back and get back into the studio. I'm mm. really excited for that. Um, and I'm really proud of myself for the summer as well. Cause it's been, as I said, like a whirlwind, mm. but like, I feel so good now that I'm playing these shows and, and loving it, uh, loving the tunes I'm playing and yeah. really learning. And, and I have learned from this summer as well. I love that. Yeah. How was your um, first tour in America? Oh, it was, it was great. Went to Palm Springs, was DJing that 40 degrees heat. It's really gross out there. Old. <laughs> it was an experience. I mean, I the USA is so different from the UK. I yeah. just played at Firefly Festival. Um, How was that? I, I've never played there. The place is insane. It has such a wide range of acts. Like mm. I was on, it was either go see Dua Lipa or it was go see me. <laughs> Which is just no pressure. <laughs> I had the crowds, <laughs> um, but it's it's really good. I mean, I am I was born in Houston, Texas, so yeah. like the USA is somewhere I really just want to hit because I love the place. I, even though I had the worst time in LA, I do love the place. Um, People are going to be like, "Wait, she just said that she's American. She was born in America." I like, know, right? And I sound so Scottish. Well, I am Scottish as well. Yeah. Born in America, moved to Scotland, and now I'm in London. <laughs> it's wild. I love that um, you got... Have you actually got your passport yet? Oh, yeah. For America? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <sighs> I know. Although, I've left it on... Um, I left one bag on the plane because it's me. I just leave things everywhere. How? It's in my, bag. It's How, in my head Amy? in my bag. I don't know. It's just... Honestly, it's, it's just me all over. So... The U.S. passport is still in BA Airlines. We need to get you a carer. <laughs> we do. We honestly do. It's 
hurts. It hurts sometimes. Does but... it annoy you that you're like this? Yes. yes. <laughs> it does, Will. I just need to accept it. Like I just left a jacket as well in this like casino I was in. Like this new jacket that I wore once to Firefly and just left it there. I was just like, why am I like this? Why? I love it. It cracks me up. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm happy that it's not happening to me. It annoys yeah. me if I forget like a cable in a hotel room. I get so annoyed. Oh, God, you wouldn't like being me then, Will, honestly. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. <laughs> um, yeah, that's... America is very different to the UK. Yes. Uh, I found out, like, the I had my first show in Denver, and I remember getting to the club, and I've never been so nervous for a show in my really? entire life. It wasn't even that big a, of a club. Where and did you I was play? With my man. Um, club final. Oh, okay. You work yeah. Brett for Brennan. Pardon? For Brennan. Did you meet Brennan? Option four? Uh, he, he's I the promoter there. I don't think so. He's a Because they didn't even, when I was outside the club, they were like, oh, you're not the DJ. Like, you're not playing. <laughs> and I had to wait there for like 20 minutes. And I was like, okay, cool. I meant to be on in like 10 minutes. So oh, let's no. go. Um, and then when I got in, it was like, oh, where do I sit kind of thing. So yeah. it was a bit like all over the place. Um, like the differences from like some festivals, honestly, where you're like, tr like Tomorrowland was insane. Yeah. And you get to like, you know, some shows and it's like, okay, you're not playing. It's, yeah, it's yeah. so strange. But I was so nervous because I was like, oh my God, I don't know what this crowd is going to be like. Yeah. The girl before me wasn't my style. And that was a thing. Like I got there and I was like, I need to play me like yeah. i can't just do what this girl was doing because mm -hmm. like she's got the crowds okay i'm gonna you always have to play a crowd it's an american crowd i'm gonna have to play like these records because i know they're gonna go off but they were what i wanted to play but oh my god my manager was just like you need to chill out you need to chill out i was proper sitting there like oh my god <laughs> but it was great it was a great show and then palm springs was amazing as well and then firefly i've just been to it was insane as well so mm. i can't complain are you going back out there this year? That's it for me now. Nice. Um, nothing planned. So I think it'll be next year. Sweet. And hopefully I mean, I'm, I've got plans for next year. So yeah. What have you, yeah. got, what have you got plans for? Well, the plans just to be in the US. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> have you been back to Houston? No, no. I need to go back. Have you got family out there at all? Or have you just got friends? No, just, just friends. Yeah. Um, so it would be good to go back. I want to go and do America, you know, actually mm. go see America. Because I feel like with this um, touring life, you get into a hotel, as you know, you get into a hotel, you go to the venue, and then you get on the plane and you don't actually get to see places. Yeah. And I think like I've been taking more time to like actually book time around um, when I'm playing, like mental health as well, just to like not just like go do a show and leave. Um and I, I think next year as well, I want to do more of that or mm. just have more time to myself as well. It's nice to be able to do that. Mm, I, yeah. I don't really do it, if I'm honest. I, don't I find really. it really hard. Like, I find, like, as well, like, it's another conversation of, like, doing things by yourself. Like, I'm not great or I was not great mm. at, like... I mean, even the simplest things of going down to breakfast by yourself and mm. or, I mean, it sounds so stupid to be no, fair. No, it doesn't. Like, it really doesn't. I get it. You know, and before a big show that you're playing, going for a meal by yourself or it's like if you're waiting for a 3 a.m. show and you're in the hotel room, like it just sometimes feels really shit. Mm. And like you get to these places and you're like, I am in the U.S. and I've woke up in L.A. Why am I not happy? And yeah. I think that's like one thing a lot of people... <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of DJs do resonate with because the people I've spoke to are like, I get you. Mm. But this whole DJ life like looks so amazing. Like, oh, I'm in LA or I'm in yeah. um, Paris. I'm in, you know, all these places. But it's not all fun and games. Mm. But learning to actually love your own company and taking care of yourself, like eating healthy, yeah. having sleep um, is really important as well. Yeah, I think I... I can relate to you on a, to a certain extent. I love being by myself. I'm a bit of a weirdo. I, I've always liked that, like just getting into a hotel room and going like, fuck yeah, I don't have to speak to anyone for a bit. I, yeah. love, I love that. But I think what I've done over the years is just made friends um, in different cities. And yeah. like, I've been fortunate enough that I've like have friends in most cities. Um, 
and I think that that's really helped my m- me enjoy going to different places and things like that. Like I'm off to New Zealand and Australia tomorrow, and oh, amazing! Like I would, I'd, I'd be back by this by the time this comes out. But like, I'll be honest, touring Australia and isn't my favorite place to go. But what's kind of the re- there's multiple reasons why I don't love going there. If you know what I mean, like the main reason is I'm not that big over there, so the shows are never that great for me. Mm-hmm. And it, but I have to go out there to grow that, and I have to, and I accept that. But I've got friends out there now, and I've got, and that's what's like. I'm really excited to go and see them, and then I will mm-hmm. work on top of that, and I'm gonna try and take time out and take give myself a bit of a break, but. What do you do? Like, how do you deal with that? Like loneliness of being on tour? Um, I mean, like I try, one thing is when you go to venues as well, like I go to venues, I speak to people and like you make friends, right? Mm. Like what you're saying. So you're not just going in. And I think that's being nice and kind. Like if you just go in and play your show and leave, which sometimes you do need to do, but like be nice to everyone. The people that are supporting you as well, Mm. um, really helps. And I think with the, I mean, with the loneliness thing, it's like sometimes it accepting it I know that sounds not the best advice but like if you're having a meal by yourself I mean I do love being in the hotel room as well I'll just say by myself but like I think it's like the whole like feeling bad for not mm. like I don't know just feeling bad for maybe sitting around in the hotel room but sometimes I tell myself like right I need to go out I need to have a walk mm. um, and sometimes accept that it is lonely but yeah. that's something like you learn um to not always feel bad that you're not doing something in a place mm. if that maybe makes sense yeah no totally and i think also i don't know about you but for you for like something that like i love to go to cinema by myself that's like if i'm if i've got time on when i'm touring like i get to see i might go to cinema by myself and then like that. i I'm, say that again I'm going to have to do that, you know. It's the best. That. I've never done that. It's the, and this is the thing. is like we, we as society tells us, is like we go to the cinema with our friends and mm. we enjoy the cinema and it's an experience. And then I tell people that I go by myself, they're like, why are you going by yourself? Like, isn't that lonely? It's like, well, I go to the cinema and I don't talk to my friends. I mm. sit by myself because like, even if I'm going with like 10 people, I'm not talking to them throughout the whole of the cinema. I'm watching a film. Like, I don't need anyone to hold my hand whilst watching the cinema. I'm going because I enjoy being by myself and and watching films. And it's that society kind of tells you that you always have to be with somebody. You go out for dinner with people, with your friends, but you don't go out to dinner by yourself. Like, mm-hmm. until I, I I grew to like that. And it took it, it does take a while. It took, took me a process. I think it's just a different experience. Like, yeah. if I go to a place and I have someone there with me, like it's fun, right? Mm. Having someone there supporting you is always a nice thing. When you go by yourself, like there's more pressure of like, for me, like, Oh do can I make this flight? Am I going to the right gate? Or like Mm. all this kind of thing. Like it's a different experience or just waking up in the hotel room, like, and being by yourself. Like you just need to accept that, that it's going to be, a different vibe that you get Mm. um and that's what i try and do like okay this is maybe not going to be the most fun thing when i wake up but i'm gonna love it for what it is and the next time i'll have someone or whatnot you know Mm. love that love that do you like it when people come with you tori Oh, I love it when I have someone there all the time, you know, like I do like it one because then I can get some content. It always helps, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but I just find it like m- more fun um, and having someone there is always nice. So I do enjoy it. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Um, let's wrap this up. We've just done an hour and I think we've covered everything. And Great. Well, it's been it's been good to chat. Thanks so, so much for coming on. It's, well, it's thank been, you for having me. We haven't spoke for a while, so it's been nice to catch up. Um, Tom Tune is out now. Yes, go stream it go on those Spotify it. playlists. Go listen to it, <laughs> motherfuckers. Um, yeah. How can people follow you? How can people talk to you, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? On 
every platform it's amy l a m y e l l e with no space no space people no if space. you put a space in she will kill you oh i will yeah i still think you're saved in my phone as amy space l vocalist I, i'll accept it vocalist accept it. You, one day one you've day not, you've not even got the dj yeah, for some reason. I've just well, kept you. Well, at least it's not DJ shit tunes, Phil. Which we oh, we haven't spoken about DJ shit tunes. I believe I just brought that up as well. Right. Let's talk about DJ shit tunes. I've got all day. <laughs> right. Oh, God. This is going to be the bit that makes the podcast. I know, right? This is going to be the... Um, D- DJ shit tunes is going to be the clip that I make. Oh, God. Well, in uni, I was <laughs> surrounded by... Oh, I, before I said I didn't know any DJs, but there were these DJs, but I didn't really know them. And I was in the top lounge and they handed me the aux cable and I was playing all, because I loved all the commercial stuff. I was playing all the commercial stuff and I had a name of DJ Shit Tunes in my first year of, <laughs> of uni. Uh, I still need to get you a t-shirt made for that. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's gonna happen, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you like get a Grammy, I'm I'll get you like a t shirt with DJ shit tunes. DJ shit tunes. Just to humble oh. you, just to bring you back down to to where where you where, are, yeah, yeah, where you originated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that was my name. Love it. Love it. Mate, thank you so much for coming on. Keep safe. I love you lots and I'll see you when I see you. Oh, thank you so much, bro. Thank you for having me. Keep safe. Bye. And that is a wrap. Big love to you, everybody that listened. Uh, don't forget to review, hit subscribe. See you next time.